Hello everybody, we are going to do a still life from inspiration from this artist Cezanne and he did a little bit of a mix of realism and he also started this whole new trend where he would try to almost cartoonify realistic subject matter. So like these apples, all the fruit, the plates, he almost made it kind of like a cartoon by putting these dark lines and stuff and we're going to kind of copy his style. So what I want you guys to do is get your supplies together. You might want to cover a surface to protect it. You need um, your pastels, watercolors, you want a light, a light source like last time. Perhaps get some q-tips. It might have come, you might already have q-tips. You're gonna want your watercolor paper. You're gonna want a pencil and eraser. Um, you're also going to want your paintbrush and your sketchbook and three or four objects to use for your still life and you just want some simple shapes. So I picked toilet paper, an apple, and a box. It actually has tea in it. Once you have all of your objects set up and your light source, I want you guys to do a quick sketch of your shapes of your objects and kind of practice how to draw them first. You can do a few tries. Make sure you include your shadows as well. When you're done practicing your composition and you've figured it out, you can get your watercolor paper. Um, I tape down my piece of paper because sometimes when you do watercolors it curls up so I actually recommend t looping the tape and taping it from the back because I discovered that it rips the paper when you try to pull it off. So here I am um, drawing out my final sketch, my final plan for my composition on the watercolor paper. I chose two shapes that I know because of last week. One of them is a box, so it's kind of similar to the cube in the rectangle, and I also chose toilet paper because it's a cylinder. So that's two shapes that I know are pretty simple and I picked those from the house. An apple is very similar to a sphere. We didn't get to do spheres, but because it's part of those geometric shapes and I know how they work, I wanted to pick something like an apple. Plus I could also copy Cezanne's pictures. He has a lot of apple pictures. When you're done outlining your objects and the shadows, you can start to fill in with your pastels. Now I'm doing a green apple and one of Cezanne's pictures has a green apple. So I'm looking at it and I'm trying to decide what colors to use. When Cezanne was working, he was influenced by Impressionism and the Impressionists didn't like to use black. And so when I'm making shadows with my apples, I can't use black. I'm only using colors like blue and orange and dark green and then using white for highlights. I didn't use any black. So if you guys are doing a, sh a, a fruit, look at Cezanne's pictures. Does he have different kinds of colors in his shadows? Think of a creative color that you can use to create a shadow. A red apple probably has purple in the shadows or blue. Okay, so I finished my apple pretty much and I put a blue shadow underneath it. Um, I didn't want to use black again because we're not really supposed to use black until the very end. I worked on my toilet paper next. I created um, a blue outline and I added blue to create shadows. I also even put yellow for my highlights where my highlights are because I felt like in my still life I could see those colors on my toilet paper. Once I put those colors in I used white to blend it all together and I really, really filled it in with white and then finished it off with a blue shadow. You guys don't have to fill in everything really, really thick with the pastels because those little gaps are gonna get filled in with some watercolors later on. The pastels are going to act as a resist, so anything that doesn't have pastel on it will absorb watercolor. When you try to paint over the pastels with your watercolor, it's not going to absorb because oil doesn't mix with water. So the oil resists the watercolor. So you're going to see that later when we do it. So I filled in my box and I 
um, use different colors. I used a little bit of brown and a little bit of peach and a little bit of blue in the shadow. Um, and now to finish this off, we're going to do a very cool Cezanne trademark, which is using black to outline some of your shapes. He doesn't outline everything. He just outlines little shadowy areas to make things stand out. So I only outlined some of my apple and some of my toilet paper and some of my box. So if you look around and peek and see where I outlined, it made it really stand out especially from our shadows. So stare at some of those Cezanne paintings for a while, look for his black outlines, and see where you can put this into your picture. Before I took out my watercolors, I added some orange to the surface of my picture to try to make the table kind of have some texture. Um, and you guys are free to do the same. All right, so now I'm going to take out my watercolors. If you have a watercolor tray, all you have to do is wet the colors that you're about to use with a little water. If you have the watercolors that came in little containers, you need to add water to that container or take some of that out onto a paper plate and use the paper plate as a palette. I have a palette. I'm not sure if any of you guys have a palette. I put my watercolor from the tube onto my palette. The watercolors in those little cups, those are from the tube. They are totally concentrated. You only need a little, little dab of it mixed with a lot of water. I barely dab into my color and then put it off to the side with a lot of water, as you can see, and it will spread all over. It's very, very concentrated. So use lots of water. Don't think that you need to scoop up that paint and put it on the canvas because that's too much. So. I did my whole table with some orange colors that I made and now I'm doing a background with some blues and greens and I'm trying to make it feel kind of impressionistic which means quick and um, not very blended strokes I just want the paint strokes to really show just try to put some water on the paper and then watch what happens when you just dab a little bit of paint. It spreads and it kind of has a life of its own. So have fun with that part. Have fun making the background a lot like a Cezanne painting where you just kind of put little paint strokes and you don't blend it in. You can even add little paint strokes into the table and to the surface. I went crazy. I put blues and greens everywhere. I even took a little bit of reds and put that in, into the table. If at some point you have too much water on your picture or you accidentally made a mistake, just take a paper towel and dab at it. It'll come right back up. So I made, I think, a mistake with one of my shadows. The paint went on really, really thick, but watercolor's not supposed to be very thick. So I just added a little bit of water to it, dabbed it with a paper towel, and it came right out. When you guys are all finished with your picture, I just want you to wash your brushes really, really good until they're clear. There's no more paint in them. I would use clean water to rinse it, not my cup's water. If you used a palette, you're gonna wanna clean that out as well. What I typically do is use my dirty paper towel and wipe out the excess paint and then wash my palette. It's a lot faster. And that's it. Good job, everybody. And see you next week.